Today I decided to focus on my video about best reverse harem anime out there. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and turn on notifications for more videos. Also comments and likes are appreciated. Haruhi Fujioka is a bright scholarship candidate with no rank or title to speak of. A rare species at Oran Academy, an elite school for students of high pedigree. When she opens the door to music room number 3 hoping to find a quiet place to study, Haruhi unexpectedly stumbles upon the host club. Led by the princely Tamaki Suo, the club, whose other members include the Shadow King, Kiyoya Utori, the mischievous Hidachin twins, Kaoru and Hikaru, the childlike Mitsukuni Haninazuka, also known as Honey, and his strong protector Takashi, Mori, Morinazuka, is where handsome boys with too much time on their hands entertain the girls in the academy. In a frantic attempt to remove herself from the hosts, Haruhi ends up breaking a vase worth 8 million yen and is forced into becoming the eccentric group's general errand boy to repay her enormous debt. However, thanks to her convincingly masculine appearance, her naturally genial disposition toward girls, and fascinating commoner status, she is soon promoted to full-time male host. And before long, Haruhi is plunged into a glitzy whirlwind of elaborate cosplays, rich food, and exciting shenanigans that only the immensely wealthy host club can pull off. Most people would prefer being the protagonist of a world full of adventure, be it in a game or in another world. But, unfortunately, a certain girl is not so lucky. Regaining the memories of her past life, she realizes that she was reborn in the world of Fortune Lover, one of the games she used to play. Unfortunately, the character she was reincarnated into, Katarina Clays, is the game's main antagonist, who faces utter doom in every ending. Using her extensive knowledge of the game, she takes it upon herself to escape from the chains of this accursed destiny. However, this will not be an easy feat, especially since she needs to be cautious as to not set off death flags that may speed up the impending doom she is trying to avoid. Even so, to make a change that will affect the lives of everyone around her, she strives, not as the heroine, but as the villainess. Mei Ayazuki is just your ordinary, everyday high school girl. That is until one night, when the moon is full and red, she's transported through time to the Meiji period by Charlie, a self-proclaimed magician. She ends up in a strange, Meiji era, Tokyo, where the existence of ghosts is accepted. Led by Charlie, she finally arrives at the Rokumeikan. There, waiting for her to arrive, are the historical figures Ugai Mori, Shunsao Hishida, Otajiru Kawakami, Kyoka Izumi, Goru Fujita, Yakumo Koizumi, and Tosuke Iwasaki. Whilst interacting with these men, she discovers she is a Tamayori, someone who can see ghosts, a skill that is highly valued in the Meiji period. Due to these powers, her relationship with the men begins to change. As she gets to know these handsome men in a new era she just can't get used to, a love begins to grow within her. Will May be able to return to her time? What will become of her love, a love that crosses the boundaries of time and space? Kei Saranuma is a very kind second-year high school student and a devoted otaku. A little-known fact about her, though, is that she's obsessed with BL, or boys' love. Saranuma can't help but to fantasize about her male classmates falling for each other and enjoys imagining them together. A more known fact about Saranuma, however, is that she's noticeably overweight. While watching her favorite show one day, Saranuma witnesses the death of her most beloved character. Utterly depressed, she can't muster up the energy to eat her meals, let alone attend school. After an entire week, she finally recovers. But now there's something unusual about her, during the time she refused to leave her room, she ended up losing a large amount of weight and has somehow become strikingly beautiful. Now catching the eye of everyone who sees her, she finds herself at the center of attention of four boys she has always known at her school. Though they all wish to spend time with her, Saranuma would much rather they spend time falling in love with one another. 
How will Saranuma deal with the four boys pursuing her BL-obsessed self? Emma Hanada is a sweet girl with only her father to call family. One day, she learns that he will be remarrying Miwa Asahina, a wealthy fashion designer. Though she's glad she has a new place to call home, the family she gains is greater than she could ever imagine, Emma now has 13 stepbrothers. Wishing to give her father space, she moves into the Sunrise residence where her brothers live. As she settles in, Emma realizes she may not experience the loving kinship of a family that she has always longed for, as many of her new brothers exhibit feelings toward Emma that aren't just familial. With each brother desiring Emma's attention in his own way, will she be able to work toward a happy ending for all, or will she choose one brother that has stolen her heart? After fainting at work, a young lady awakens in the back room of the cafe she works at with no memory of her life or those around her. Two of her friends, whom she soon learns are named Shin and Toma, are called to help her get home safely. Once she is alone, she meets a spectral boy named Orion that only she can see and hear. He explains that she lost her memories because of his chance visit to her world, so he vows to help her remember who she is. However, regaining her departed memories without worrying those around her may be more difficult than she realizes. In addition to the gloomy Shin and the protective Toma, she must be wary of arousing the suspicions of the captivating Iki, the quick-witted Kent, and a mysterious man who lurks in the distance. As her amnesia entangles her in the lives of each of these men, her fragmented memories return piece by piece, and the mysteries of her circumstances slowly come to light. Inako is a minor country, enclosed by two superior countries, the militaristic Milidonia, with its goal of conquering as much land as possible, and the monotheistic Selenphalen, devoted to the deity Saint Philia. Ani Inako is the sole princess of her country, and in order to eliminate hostility between the three countries, she is sent as Inako's representative to a peace treaty signing in Selenphalen. However, Annie's hopes of a smooth ceremony are shattered when she meets the eccentric princes from her rival countries. With the treaty binding the three countries together, Annie and the princes must learn to overcome their differences. Together, they search for common ground on which to develop their friendship. Haruka Nanami, an aspiring composer from the countryside, longs to write music for her beloved idol, Hayato Ichinos. Determined to accomplish this goal, she enrolls into Saotome Academy, a highly regarded vocational school for the performing arts. Upon her arrival, Haruka soon learns that everyone on staff, including the headmaster, is either an idol, a composer, or a poet. To top it all off, she is surrounded by incredibly talented future idols and composers, and the competition among the students is fierce. With the possibility of recruitment by the Shining Agency upon graduation, the stakes are incredibly high. As she strives to reach her dream at the Academy, one fateful night, a series of events lead Haruka to a mysterious man standing in the moonlight, and he seems a bit familiar. Gods and ghosts only exist in fairy tales, right? That's the impression that high school girl Tamki Kasuga has before she goes to live with her grandmother in the remote village of Kifumura. After being attacked by strange creatures upon her arrival, she is soon informed that females in her family contain the blood of the Tamayori princess, who has the responsibility and power of keeping gods and ghosts sealed away so that they can't harm the general public. At first Tamaki has trouble believing this, but having five beautiful young men following her everywhere she goes acting as her guardians goes a long way towards convincing her. There's more to this job than Tamaki first realizes, however, and the path that lies ahead of her is fraught with peril and danger. Will she be able to successfully take on the heavy role that has been put on her shoulders? Ritsuka Tachibana has always been a good student, so she is completely shocked when she is suddenly summoned by the student council. Even more, they seem to think of Ritsuka as a troublemaker. 
led by the handsome Rem Kaganuki, the student council, also consisting of Yuri Sagami, Shiki Natsumazaka and Mage Nanashiro, tries to question her, but it soon becomes clear that they have ulterior motives. However, this is only the beginning. When her mother gets kidnapped, her life is turned upside down, and Ritsuka gets drawn into a world of vampires and devils. Both groups are searching for the grimoire, a forbidden item allowing its owner to rule the world. The return of her brother Lindo from overseas gives her hope, but even he appears to be hiding something. In a world filled with secrets, Ritsuka questions whom she can trust in this dark musical tale, while the handsome and dangerous members of the student council compete for her attention. Thanks for watching my video. Subscribe for my channel for more videos like this and leave likes and comments below.